My name is Susan Bowman. I'm the founder of The Pool Ministries. My friend, Adnan, invited me to teach you guys about the heart. It's such an important teaching, and I don't think there's a whole lot out there. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be here and to be able to teach this so that you can get some insight and maybe some help in dealing with, um, you know, repeating patterns that are not healthy. Okay, first thing I want you to do is I want you to comment, take a minute please, and comment in the comment section what you have either been taught that the heart is, when it's talked about in the Bible, the biblical definition of the heart. What have you been taught or what do you just think or imagine God is talking about in the scripture when he talks about the heart? Just take a minute and, you know, just type in something. And if you have no idea, just type in, I have no idea, Susan, what he's talking about when he talks about the heart. Okay? Push send. That's very helpful. And I'm going to get back to those comments just as quick as I can. So go ahead and put them in. All right. So here's our question for today. What is the Bible talking about when it talks about the heart? Now, I have had Christians tell me that they think that the heart is another name for the spirit. I mean, have you heard that? And I think it's very common for us to believe that the heart, that the heart means our emotions or that the heart somehow means the center of our being. Um, but if any of that is correct, then why did Jesus say in, I think it's Matthew twenty two thirty seven, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your mind. Now, that sounds like three different things to me. Okay, so it is the heart a distinct aspect of a human being? Now, here's another scripture, and I want you to keep this scripture particularly in mind. It's uh, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is sharper I'm, I'm sorry, for the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit. Now, whether the soul and spirit is divided, anyway, to, show, to me, that's very clear that the soul is not the spirit and the spirit is not the soul. They're distinct aspects of the image of God. They're not the same. P people somehow or the other want to use them interchangeably, but they're two different words in the Greek and here, there are two different aspects of you and me. And the scripture, Hebrews 4.12, goes on to say, of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So now we have a third thing. We've got soul, spirit, heart. Okay, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 says, and... and <clears throat> This scripture is the one that I think we point to the most when we talk about the fact that a person is a tripartite being, spirit, soul, and body. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. That's First Thessalonians 5.23. Three parts, spirit, soul, body. Look back up at Hebrews 4.12. You've got spirit, soul, and heart. Okay, is the heart a part of our body? Not something metaphorical or metaphysical, but actually a part of our physical body. Now, we need to know this. And it's crucial that we arrive at an accurate understanding of our hearts. Here's why. The scripture advises us to guard this thing called a heart above everything else. Now, why are we warned to so carefully guard our hearts? More than any, I mean, more than anything else, it's because the heart determines the course of our life. Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. I think I need to get a handle on whatever is determining the course of my life. What do you think? Now let's get down to the word. 
In the Old Testament, the word translated heart is from the Hebrew word leb, L-E-B, and it's got accent marks, one here and one here. Leb means the physical heart. It occurs 598 times in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, the word translated heart is cardia, which is where we get cardiology from, and that means the physical heart. And it appears 156 times in the New Testament. That's over 750 times. Now compare how many times the scripture references heart, the physical heart, to how many times it references the physical brain. It doesn't. The brain is never mentioned in scripture. The mind is mentioned, but not the brain. So, does this mean that God thinks that our physical heart is more important than the brain? Well, over 750 times, that's a lot of referencing the physical heart. That's not one or two times. So, is the Bible talking about the actual physical heart when it says the heart has thoughts and intentions? I mean, how is it possible for a bodily organ to think like, say, our brains think, wait, what? We have no problem believing that the brain thinks because that's what we've been taught and, and that's pretty much what we experience. But have you ever thought about the fact that the heart is capable of thinking also? So that's kind of a strange idea for us modern thinkers. So let's take a look at what medical researchers are discovering about the heart. They have found that the physical heart contains a complex neurological system that functions like a brain. They have found that the heart learns, remembers, feels, and acts independently of our cranial brain. As a matter of fact, these researchers have found that our early childhood experiences are stored as patterns in our physical heart and that these patterns determine how we perceive life. They determine what we expect will happen in our relationships as we go through life. And I'm pretty sure that's what the Bible said in Proverbs 4.23. So let's look. Okay, so that's medicine. Medical researchers are in agreement with what the, heart, what the Bible says about the heart. Now here's what Jesus said about the heart. A couple of things he said. A good man produces good out of the good storeroom of his heart. Um, that's Luke 6.45. The word heart here is cardia. So Jesus is saying that the heart functions as a storeroom. This means there's stuff stored in our hearts. So what have we learned so far? Okay, that lines up with what medical science is saying, that our, store, that our heart stores patterns from our early childhood experiences, right? These are laid down in our heart as patterns. That's our store heart. If it's good, what's in here, our expectation is that we're going to be loved and accepted and supported, then that comes out of our heart. But if what's in our heart is evil, not in the sense that it's, you want to hurt somebody, but evil in the sense that we're not accepted, we're not loved, we're not going to be supported, that's going to come out of our heart. That's going to affect how we perceive ourselves, other people, and what we expect will happen in our lives. So one, here's what we've learned. The heart is a physical part of us that thinks and acts independently from the brain, and that lines up with what the Bible says about the heart. Two, the heart is a storeroom. It stores patterns that were laid down in early childhood. Now, there is a researcher, a famous researcher, uh, his name is Dr. Uh, Rollin McCready, and he is an expert. It, it may be perhaps even the apostle of the field of neurocardiology. And he writes that when there is disharmony in the home, when the home is dysfunctional and there's a lot of disharmony, that the heart takes these early life experiences and then lays them down as patterns. And then the heart teaches the brain what to expect 
and how life works for you. So let's say you come from a chaotic home. Your heart lays down these patterns of chaos. This is how life works for you, locks it into place. And then it will, your life will flow through the expectation that things are going to be chaotic for you. Okay. All right. So your heart teaches your brain what to expect from life. That the patterns that were laid down in your childhood will repeat. So take a minute. And this is something I would love for you to comment on also is what are the repeating patterns in your life? Are they the same as what you experienced as a child? Take a minute to comment on that. Yes, no, yes, you know, there was alcoholism in my family. I grew up in an alcoholic home. I married an alcoholic. I became an alcoholic. Um, I was neglected as a child. I find it hard to connect with my children. Repeated patterns in your life. If you could take a minute, and I'll get back to those comments too as soon as I can, to just comment, or is, is your childhood home the patterns that, that were laid down in your heart as you experienced your childhood home? Is that repeating in your life now? Okay. Now, one more thing before I wrap up the short teaching. One, your physical heart is a thinking part of you. It informs your brain. It's not the other way around. If you're like me, I was raised at a time in, in the church at a time when renewing your mind was very was 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 the thing. And of course, it's a very important thing. And thank God that I was taught it. But a renewed mind does not change your heart. We're going to get into a later teaching some of the strategies. And you can go to my YouTube channel. It's The Pool Ministries. Susan Bowman, put my name in there. The Pool Ministries, Susan Bowman. And pull up a an, an entire series called Your Identity in the Heart. And that will help you begin to move forward in understanding this uh, the importance of your heart. Okay. One, your physical heart is a thinking part of you. It informs your brain. So renewing your mind is good. Please renew your mind. It's absolutely essential for your well-being, but it doesn't change what you believe here. You have to use other tools to change what you believe in your heart. Two, your physical heart stores patterns from your early life experiences and insists that those patterns are the way life works for you. That's Proverbs 4.23. And now here's a third thing I want you to consider until we come back. And it's Romans 10.10, 10, with the heart we believe. So stay tuned for part two. Hopefully I'll be back with you soon. God bless you. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for those who are listening to this teaching. I pray, Father, that you will, that this will start the ball rolling in their in their in, that this will start the ball rolling so that they will begin to learn what they really believe here that is hidden in the heart and they will begin to learn how important it is and how it affects everything in their life and that they will begin to learn how to take dominion over this heart belief system and how to reprogram it so that what they believe here aligns with what they believe in their minds and what you teach us in your word. I ask this in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please tune in for the next one.